Hey there, it's me, Ripper the Freakin' Clown, the unpredictable cartoon character come to life. And I'm here with your complete WWE Extreme Rules pay-per-view results. Instead of watching the pay-per-view or reading those results online, I appreciate you checking out my video. And I've got a little secret for you. I didn't watch the pay-per-view either. I got all the results on the internet. Here we go. Kalisto defeated Apollo Crews on the pre-show. Big freaking snore there. Miz defeated Dean Ambrose to win the Intercontinental title for like the 50th or 75th time or something like that. As if we really needed to see that feud continue from SmackDown. And as, as if we really need to see it continue even further now, which we know it'll probably stretch out for at least till SummerSlam. Uh, there was a mixed tag match tonight that no one gave a shit about. Rich Swan and Sasha Banks defeated Gnome Dar and Alicia Fox. Look, I wouldn't want to watch that match if Rich Swan, Sasha Banks, Alicia Fox, and Gnome Dar broke into my house and were fighting in the living room at 3 a.m. Alexa Bliss defeated Bailey in a kendo stick on a pole match. Somewhere tonight, the Sandman was drinking beer and crying himself to sleep. Also, somewhere tonight, uh, Judy Bagwell was drinking beer and crying herself to sleep. Let's see, Sheamus and Cesaro, they defeated the Hardy Boys inside a steel cage. I guess doing it, the, having the title switch in the steel cage was a, a cheap way to have uh, Sheamus and Cesaro win the belts without actually having to pin the Hardy Boys. Neville defeated Austin Aries to retain the Cruiserweight title in a submissions match. You know, I really, I just can't get into the Cruiserweight matches, even though I, in theory I should because I love that type of uh, wrestling. But I just know that they're going to do what they always do, and that's let the cruiserweight division, you know, kind of uh, go on for at least a year, maybe a year and a half, and then they're going to throw all the little guys onto the main roster and have the big guys squash the shit out of them. And I've always hated that. WCW did it. WWE did it. You know they're going to do it again eventually down the line. And uh, the match that I really wanted to see, um, not that I was watching it, but if I was actually watching this pay-per-view, the match that I would want to see, Gold Dust versus R Truth did not take place. Apparently, from what I read on the internet, after announcing the match on Monday night, midweek, they decided it wasn't pay-per-view worthy. Gold Dust versus R Truth was not pay-per-view worthy, but the same brainiacs that came to that decision actually believe that um, Kalisto versus Apollo Crews was pay-per-view worthy, you know, at least on the pre-show. But those same brainiacs still thought that Rich Swan and Chasha Banks versus Nomdar and Alicia Fox was pay-per-view worthy. Unfreaking believable. You know those Goldust promos that they aired over the past couple weeks? He really recaptured the magic that he had back in 1995. And I'd really like to see them do something with the heel Goldust character, kind of like as a final run for him. But somehow I doubt having, <laughs> having you know, received the news that they scrapped that match from the pay-per-view because they didn't think it was pay-per-view worthy. I somehow doubt they're going to be doing anything with Goldust other than probably having him job out uh, as they have been as face. Now they'll be having him job out as a heel. And in the main event of the Extreme Rules pay-per-view tonight, so Samoa Joe, he defeated Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Bray Wyatt, and Finn Balor to become the number one contender for Brock Lesnar's universal title. You know, we haven't really seen Brock Lesnar since WrestleMania. He hasn't defended it. And uh, as if the title meant anything, you know, before WrestleMania, it certainly means nothing now. And uh, I guess, you know, having Samoa win kind of is positive because he's really the only one out of those five guys that isn't stale and boring. And, you know, all the characters at this point kind of mean nothing. So I guess Samojo is the newest one of the group who, um, you know, could actually maybe do something with Lesnar. But, you know, think about this. And that was what I initially, this is what I initially thought of when I heard that Samojo won. Because, again, I wasn't watching it. I was reading the results online. Um, just a few months ago, didn't Samojo lose to Seth Rollins? So, not unlike when the WWE expected us to believe that Roman Reigns, a guy who repeatedly lost to that fat, overweight, greaser um, Kevin Owens and the midlife crisis ghoul Chris Jericho, they, after multiple losses to Jericho and Owens, the WWE expected us to believe that Roman Reigns could beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania, and now apparently they want us to believe that um, Samoa Joe, having just lost to Seth Rollins, can somehow beat Brock Lesnar. You know, nothing that they do anymore makes sense. This product has become so convoluted, so absolutely 
ridiculous that it's hard for me to even watch it when it's free on TV, let alone talk about it in these videos. It's just so insulting to the intelligence, and this Extreme Rules pay-per-view uh, really just exemplifies that they don't have a freaking clue what they're doing anymore. It's almost like they're just throwing shit against the wall, and they hope that something works, because nothing works anymore. Anyway, I'm tired of talking about this pay-per-view. This is like the 6th or 7th or 8th, tenth, maybe even 10th video I've done tonight about this shit show. So I'm going to close it out. I'm Ripper the Clown, and if you've enjoyed my videos tonight, if you've enjoyed this Extreme Rules recap video, you better goddamn well subscribe to my channel.